This is Dr. Steven Seligman, and I have been asked by Pharmacy Solutions to demonstrate uh, my technique for inserting uh, hormone pellets in both men and women. The technique that I will demonstrate is one that I've evolved over the last seven years. This uh, technique is uh, very efficient, allowing you to do multiple patients in a single day. The uh, technique that I'm now going to demonstrate is for your male patient. Uh, this technique has evolved over the last seven years and uh, what we have found to be the most efficient. So besides the pellet tray, some other things that we'll have ready is obviously a mayo tray, a, some mastosol to use for the uh, steri strips, a large band-aid that we buy in volume. This is the same type band-aid that you might put on a a scraped knee you can get at the uh, pharmacy. We have the uh, two syringes of uh, injectable anesthetic that were prepared earlier this morning before the patients ever arrived. In each syringe we have six cc's of 1% uh, lidocaine plain, three cc's of lidocaine with epinephrine, and one cc of buffering bicarbonate. Uh, unlike the female patients with the male patient we may have to use as much as two syringes. We also have uh, al an alcohol swab, the, uh, an the antiseptic, and a non-sterile um, glove. So the first thing I do is I kind of identify my anatomic landmarks. The patient is uh, laying on his side with his head to my left, and you'll see here is the uh, iliac crest, and obviously here is his buttocks. This is a uh, blue chuck that we use on every patient because as you do the procedures many times the anesthetic or maybe even a little bit of blood can drip down the patient's leg and this protects the clothing. So what we want to do is we want to pick a spot that is more or less between the uh, iliac crest and the actual meat part or the muscly part of the buttocks. So I'm going to pick a spot right in here and aiming for the small amount of fat that we have present. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my two uh, points that I'm going to be aiming for with my pellets. We're going to be placing uh, five pellets, I believe, so we'll need to make two channels. So what we've done is we've marked the patient with where I'm going to put my uh, incision and where I'm going to aim the in, uh, antiseptic. We're going to uh, put on a non-sterile glove wipe the injection spot off. So we make a small wheel underneath the skin. And then I'm just going to basically push the underneath the skin, going through the, the dermis and the, the very superficial subcutaneous tissue. I'm just going to basically push in that direction. So I'm going to withdraw my needle, and now I'm going to aim towards the other spot. Some patients will require more anesthetic. I think we're going to be able to, to get away with one syringe. Okay, so while the uh, local anesthetic is setting up, um, we're going to paint the patient with the uh, antiseptic. So now we're going to open the trocar tray. Obviously, because the pellets are larger in men, you have a, a, a different kit. We've found that having the mayo stand at your side rather than putting the instruments on the bed is actually more efficient. Place the drape over the 
surgical site. Here is the trocar with the, the metal needle uh, tip. Insert this through there. Okay, so uh, this is the a little scalpel with an 11 blade. So typically for most patients, the, uh, by the time you inject them and you wipe the site off with the antiseptic, uh, the local anesthetic has had plenty of time to work. There's times with scheduling that we will have multiple pellet patients at one time, and you can actually inject several patients and then rotate through and put the pellets in each patient. That way you make sure that they are for sure very uh, numb and anesthetized. Okay, so we're going to insert through our little incision we've made the uh, trocar more or less at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so once we get through the incision, I'm going to aim towards my finger, staying uh, superficial but not coming through the skin, and I can feel how deep I am with my fingertip. Once I've done that, I withdraw the, um, this, in, this insertion needle. Okay, my assistant is going to put the pellets in a tray. So now I'm going to hold the, hold the insertion trocar that's been left in place up with my finger just to kind of keep it elevated to keep the uh, pellets from falling out. And we just kind of load them in the channel, feed them in. Okay. So now I'm going to use the, in, the insertion trocar. We're going to put it down the channel until I start feeling some resistance. And then I'm going to gently pull the, out, the outside trocar out as I am pulling back. So what that does is it places the pellets in place. And you want to be careful not to push too hard and take at, uh, placing you at risk for maybe breaking one of the pellets. So once we've done that, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this device back in. You doing good? Okay, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to aim towards the other track. And repeat the same procedure. Now in this patient we're using just two tracks. Some patients that are getting more pellets you may actually have to make a third track in the middle. And we just repeat the same procedure. Gently pushing in as we're advancing the introducer out and we just gently pull it out. So hopefully the patient's not going to have any significant bleeding, but in men since you're tending to go a little bit more in the muscle that you may have a little bit of bleeding and you may want to put a little bit of pressure on for a few minutes. Only rarely do we ever have to put uh, a stitch in one of these incisions. You can see that's nice and dry. So we have the mastosol that we're going to just apply to the incision and that's going to keep these steri strips on for a few days. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the steri strips with the tweezers and we're going to place these over the incision. OK, 
Okay. Put a little bit of pressure. If the patient is having a little bit of oozing through the steri strips, you may want to fold a four by four and place it underneath this Band-Aid. Otherwise, we use this large Band-Aid and put it quite snug over the incision so that it gives us a little bit of pressure. And that's the end of the procedure. So uh, you've seen the uh, procedure and how simple it is to do. Um, some uh, points are that many times it's more efficient to group your patients together in your schedule so that you could actually be doing several patients at one time. Uh, it's more efficient in the morning if your medical assistants draw up the local anesthetic and have it ready rather than having to be drawn for each patient while you're doing the procedure. After the procedure, we uh, review the, uh, our instructions. I typically ask them to keep the big Band-Aid on for two days. They can take a shower immediately. And uh, with regards to a woman, not to do any heavy physical exercise for 24 hours. And with men, I ask them uh, to refrain from any uh, excessive physical exercise or going to the gym for 48 to 72 hours. Uh, I tell the patients to allow the steri strips to fall off, which uh, they typically do in three to seven days. We discuss the uh, reasons that the patient should call us. Uh, typically that's if they have increasing pain at the site of the insertion, if they develop any redness uh, at the site or possibly fever. It's very rare to see the patients uh, expel the hormone pellets, but probably less than 1% of patients we see this. Typically, these, uh, if the patient presents and they're expelling a pellet, you can place a small amount of local anesthesia, uh, just superficially open the skin, and the pellet uh, can be easily removed from underneath the skin. What I typically do is I will just uh, pick a, uh, another insertion site, typically on the other side of the body, and will uh, insert a hormone pellet of the identical strength. Obviously, with men, you would know the strength of the pellet. With women, um, since I tend to insert the testosterone pellets first and the estrogen pellets second, it's usually the estrogen pellet that's going to be extruded. Once again, this is a very uncommon uh, thing that we observe in the office. Thank you.